Celebrity Book Club. Hey, mate. Mate, excuse me, mate. Do you mind if I take a photo of you? You look really random and cool. Oh, uh, yeah. I was just heading to my normal person's job at a restaurant. Uh, I never thought of myself as the subject of a photographer's interest. Oh, yeah, man. You're just really cool. And the light is, like, really hitting the side of your face right now on 23rd and 3rd in the middle of New York City. Oh, okay. So what should I do? Just be you, mate. Like, you're so cool. Uh, Uh I don't know. Maybe just lean up against that bodega. Maybe grab Uh, that mangy random cat in the bodega. uh, Okay, yeah. I mean, this just seems so normal to me. This is like an everyday thing I would just do in my life with Um, that that bodega cat. That's hilarious, mate. I love New York. You guys have crazy lives. Okay, let me just get um, the F-stop right. Okay, focusing oh, sh- right now. And feel free to move, because I just like to capture action. Oh, God, I'm, I'm so embarrassed. I, but yet, suddenly I'm feeling a little bit empowered. Yeah, you're doing great, mate. Okay, maybe I'll just do a, a quick little spin or something. That's not too much movement? Haha, <laughs> no! I love when guys move and are beautiful. But not, I'm, not, I'm not a homosexual or have a beautiful fiancé, but I love mm, beautiful men. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I really want a wife. Oh, it's the best. When you see a girl that you love as a fit bird, you just got to go for it. I I, I couldn't feel more alive or at ease right now, but I have to go back to my normal day-to-day work life because that's New York City. Is it okay if I... Yeah, man, go. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Brooklyn. What's your name? My name is just Joe Schmo, New Yorker. Really good to meet you, Joe. Catch you on the flip side in this crazy city. Thanks again, mate. Man, I can barely understand you with that insane foreign accent, but I hope you find what you're looking for, man. Adios. Cheerio. at the door. It's all your friends, you filthy whore. Your husband's gone, and we've got books and a bottle of wine to kill. It's Hollywood. It's books. It's gossip. I'm shook. It's memoirs. It's martinis. It's Studio 54. It's Celebrity Book Club. Come read it while it's hot. Celebrity Book Club. Tell your secrets, we won't talk. Celebrity Book Club. No boys are allowed. Celebrity Book Club. Club. Buzz me in, I brought the Cuervo. Hey, best friend. Hey, best mate. How are you? <laughs> Instantly Australian. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing, yes, hey, we're, well, I'm just saying, we're going to do a British book today, and you can't yeah. resist. When we try to go British, you go mate, Australian. No, but I'm going to try and stay in like British love. I have to be in London for it to really like you know, hit home. But no. um, I love me pubs. I love me mates. <laughs> when we were in England, um, which people, which we actually never even really told our listeners about because we were so taken by the country Ireland. of Ireland. <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> um, you spoke in a British accent <laughs> the entire the time. Entire time. <laughs> <laughs> like, and British people were just kind of being like, okay, uh, you're just doing that. <laughs> like, you're just doing this. Like, all right, so, and just be like, does he think, like, I feel like they were kind of feeling bad for you in this, like, Madonna way. Like, oh, he thinks, like, some people thought it was funny. And some, some pe- people literally thought I was English love. I and think, I like, like when you got in the round. cabs and you were just like, oh, Pennyway Circle or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> We were constantly going to, like, the Farthington Meadows. <laughs> um, here's a recommendation for you, my best friend, Stephen, if you're into, like, Australian stuff. Um, this is just my way to tell you that I'm the only one, it feels like, watching that insane show Firefly Lane with Katherine Heigl. That's and not Australian. No, but there's the guy in it. There's a guy in it that's Australian. Yeah, that's one of those shows that's very, like, it's not Christian, but it... It's, <laughs> what's something that's not Christian, but feels, feels Christian? Christian. It's the very... way it's filmed, I don't know, like, the visuals and, like, what's also really produced by, like, a small Christian production company about it is that it, like, 
it does three different time periods which oh. is so weird to do like and they're always showing their friendship in the 70s but then their friendship like in the 50s it's it's friendship in the 70s in high school then it's like them in the 80s just starting out as journalists and then big it's like, hair and like trying to get interviews <laughs> yeah and just <laughs> being like go under the tape this is how we'll get the shot <laughs> and always being like, damn, I wanted to interview him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really hard to be a journalist. You're always trying to get that interview. You are. And you do have to get the shot and you have to be sneaky, as you know. And then it does like current time, but the current time is set in 2003. <laughs> Wait, that's the furthest <laughs> into the future the show ever gets? <laughs> that's so good. Because he's a like being time. a journalist like in Iraq. For, like, the Iraq War. So it's, like, all of a sudden it'll be, like, 2003. Anyway, it's one of, I think, the worst shows ever made, but also one of <laughs> the best. <laughs> I recommend it to you and any listeners out there. It's, like, Catherine Heigl, why? I guess why I mean, not? I mean, she, she doesn't have a... She's not... A, she doesn't have, like, a choice in what she does. She list, She completely ruined her career in Hollywood by, like, being, like... This crazy huge bitch who like quit Grey's Anatomy because she was too good for her. And then everyone was like, girl, you think you're too good for like the most successful show ever? Okay, like watch out. And then she just like got shitty roles and that was it. And, well, like, her she did her rom coms, like, 27 Dresses. They... What was that movie with her and Josh Dumel where they like inherit a child? <sighs> there was that one that flopped. There was The Ugly Truth with Gerard Butler that <laughs> flopped. She just was kind of being floppington. <laughs> oh right, it was called like but, Life as We Know It. Although here's what I'll say about her flopping to Nera is she kind of it wasn't totally her fault. She tried to jump off the sitcom train and into the rom com train right as the rom com era was ending. Like Twenty Seven Dresses was in many ways the last movie yes. ever made. No, 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 because it Twenty Seven Dresses is a certified classic, but it was like post wedding planner, post like rom com, like. It was the last film of that era. And she was like, TV's over. It's like, no, actually, girl, TV is kind of the only future. TV's and back. And you misread the room. And so now she's just got to take, like, whatever they'll fucking give her. And I feel like also, like, in Firefly Lane, she plays, like, a star who's, like, a total bitch. But why do we mm. call women bitches when they're just asking <laughs> for what they want? <laughs> She's a bitch. She's a diva. What about this? She's a boss. Yeah, she's a thank person. You. Business woman. Um, speaking. And of- you know, business women. <laughs> yes. Speaking, speaking of business of- women, one of the most amazing British business women is um a woman who invented girl bossing. I think it was originally called girl power. Yeah, she literally invented girl power, and she's always been hot and thin, and that's something that she really sticks to, <laughs> and I admire that consistency. Of course, we're talking about Victoria Beckham, posh, uh, posh spice. Should I wear the little black dress or the other little black dress? <laughs> <laughs> um, she's just like your classic, like just trashy. Hot. I mean, the funny thing about her being called posh is that she's kind of like not posh. Trashy. She's like she's so Essex. Lives. Yeah, like she's the <laughs> most like girls we saw getting out of a cab for a Hindu. Like she's the hot she's one like, of the Hindu who's just yeah. like that shot has too many calories. <laughs> the hot yeah, the Hindu being like, dog, we're doing skinny girls, skinny girl margaritas, and she's got like you know the dresses that, I mean the the amount of fabric it might as well be a band aid. <laughs> Um, uh, where's the rest really... of your dress? <laughs> <laughs> so she's really cool. She's an entrepreneur. And we're actually not reading her book. We're reading. I don't think she has a book. <laughs> well, she definitely has a book. She has like she's very she Lauren has, like, Conrad. Coffee she has, like, tables. She has like six books about like how to shop online. <laughs> like... Here's how you shop online. Anyway, one of the most girl boss things she did was have a hot was son. Have a... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that is so true. You ain't a girl boss if you don't have a hot son that you have named at least one of your businesses after. Yeah. Like are you I'm sure she has a line of a line of pillows called like Brooklyn. Romeo. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Romeo really, and, and all Cruz. their kids all their kids' names like are such brand names. Um but the oldest one is named Brooklyn. Brooke- Brooklyn. No, Brooklyn, where are you at? Um, <laughs> Brooklyn in the house. I mean, what is tra- what is trashier than being like 
Because it's honestly, it's the equivalent of like naming your daughter London. It's like being a British person naming your son Wait, Brooklyn. I need to have a daughter named London. <laughs> <laughs> or it's the equivalent of Diana de la Garza naming her daughter Dallas. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know him. You love him. He just got married. Brooklyn Beckham. <laughs> we are doing his photography book called What I what See. What I See. <laughs> <laughs> my photos, my words, my life. This is what I see. It's like, we get it. You're not blind. <laughs> but are you? <laughs> no, the, this book is very, bitch, I am not blind. My ass sees. Yeah. My, my ass, ass looks. <laughs> I wake up, open my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be looking all day. And this book helps me remember what I looked at. Now, we we all grow up um, with trauma, right? Mm. And some mm. could say that Brooklyn's, you know, the trauma and the plus is that he has insanely hot parents. Absolutely. But I will say they basically made like four very hot kids. Right. And- so it's like trauma kind of solved but also like okay this book was very this thing where like hot rich famous families are like so horny thank you other. thank you my entire notes were was like horny again page 10 horny again for your mom page just, just 20 being like here's a shot i love this shot of my mom she looks so beautiful and it's just like this really intimate clothes shop where she's just like really glowing, like in a car <laughs> on the way to somewhere. And it's just like all these topless photos of his siblings just being like, here's Cruz again, just being such an awesome subject. And then again, hot photos of his dad being like, my dad is a legend. My dad is the funniest person. My dad I always know. makes me laugh. And it's just like him, like. <laughs> Uh, David in a scally cap just like at a diner alone (laughs) (laughs) it's like hilarious (laughs) and like probably the first photo that in this book this beautiful book that really stuck with me um that and I would frame honestly it stuck with me for a few different reasons it's a beautiful photo of Victoria Beckham salmon fishing (laughs) in Iceland (laughs) (laughs) That really sets the tone. Um, You know, the book really starts out. Oh, and by the way, yeah. So this book is like his photos printed like with, how do I describe? It's like printed cheaply. I guess that's the word that even though this is like an expensive book. It's kind of a matte. It's kind of a matte. It's not a glossy page. It's more of a matte page. But I will say this. So this book is way more art book than drew barrymore's photo book which you may have heard us talk about in the pod which was like way more just like iphone photos like this is this is very butt magazine surprisingly so first of all most of it's in black and white the cover has that same pink tint that butt magazine does um so it's trying to be way more like auteur and minimalist um a lot some some of the photos are full bleed some are not they have like this cropping like it, honestly it's borderline art photography i would say it needs yes. way more like flowers to be art photography because you know like art photography is always like dead flowers i would say drew barrymore's book is almost outsider art like it feels like you picked up a yeah. mentally semi there person's book made on shutterfly and you're yeah. like wait a second, this is amazing. And this, as you said, yeah, it's a butt. It gives a little bit of, like, vice. Like, you're going into Casa Magazine, PS1 yeah. art fair. It's, it's not full, like, fashion photography, but it is way more Casa. It's way more vice. Um, I mean, many things. I think from the very beginning, when you're talking about the salmon fishing photos, you're seeing that. This is what I call almost, like, rich person photography. It's, in, it's like, graphic designer photography. It has – there's a, it's really about the cropping. It's very rule of thirds. It's very, like, tons of sky, tons of landscapes, like, small person, like, looking back at camera, tons of – like the Leica, like camera in the shot. So, I mean, I mean that's half of cover. this book is, yeah, half of this book is me shooting myself with the Leica camera, like in the mirror. And he'll, there's little bits of text, and he'll say, like, oh, I grab my, I instantly grab my Leica, or like, my hot mom shot on Fuji film. Well, <laughs> and when he's in that vacation in the beginning, he's, he has this really, really interesting, um, kind of justification for the concept of the book where he says, looking at the photos takes me back to the moment I capture them. 
<laughs> which is sort of like <laughs> the yeah. concept of oh, memory. Literally the concept of memory. But you know, sometimes I think we forget that. It's like, yeah. why? Yeah, because it takes you back to to that moment. And even when if you're you not there, the you're, I am feel like I'm on vacation with Posh salmon fishing. Yeah, these vacations. Also, it's, I love that they're just like also famous and rich, but they're still being like full family vacation to the Maldives. Like, I know, like we're still doing very like family vacations you did when you were eight. You know what I mean? I, I guess I didn't go to the Maldives <laughs> when I was eight. Or okay, I guess or Iceland or Napa, who traveled sure. globally with his family as a child. It's like we're not. I'm not at 30. We're not just being like mm, we're going to the Maldives. Like my but parents are going if you were like me. a sexy family, no. <laughs> like, if I was like really attracted to my mom, maybe I would be like, I let's think, go to the Maldives because like, your parents your did just go on a safari. And I feel like if you really wanted to, they would have taken you, and you could have done this sexy family safari. I just see them not wanting to like double the price of their like forty thousand dollar vacation by being like we're taking Steven and his boyfriend. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> They're so poor. <laughs> yeah, they are poor. Ultimately, coming out as my parents being poor. Yeah, okay, and now <laughs> you came out of sport. Now you're coming out as your parents being poor, not wanting to pay for you to go in safari. But he also says so. Brooklyn also says something in the in the beginning of this book, and this is the two pages at the beginning that are really the most text heavy. Oh, I hope I think I think is, I know what you're going to say. But I hope I do. he says um, he got behind the camera because he doesn't like to speak. Oh yeah, which is so yeah. photo guy, which is kind of you know the thesis of a lot of directors or you know right the because men I'm in more society comfortable are, behind the camera you know they're not encouraged to use their words obviously um, and then you know boys don't cry programs, but boys, boys do don't cry pick up like us. And they also do resin sculptures. And I think both of those are ways for men to sort of get their tears out, if you will. He also, um, the big, also this whole book, and the other thing about the intro, intro is in the whole book, <laughs> is he's like, yeah, basically also this book is a like huge for me because I've done one campaign for Pull and Bear. So no, he <laughs> says, I shot a photo diary for Pull and Bear. And it's like, what is this like <laughs> mid ass brand Pull and Bear? It's so like and greater G Star denim. It sounds so greater G Star denim. And he's like, and it's basically the whole book is a thank you to Pull and Bear <laughs> for like really like believing in him and getting him behind the camera to shoot just like one guy in jeans once. And I was like, wait a minute, I can like you have my camera be my word. <laughs> yeah. And I went to the Pull and Bear site today and I was like, okay, what? It is so dead. I'm in random. Yeah. And, you know, it's like a guy and a girl in sunglasses. Could you see Brooklyn Beckham's indelible imprint on the brand all these years later? Mm, you know, no. I'll say that. Mm. I feel like they've moved. It was a different style. It was, it was being a little more just like classic flash, big sunglasses. There's a there's a point and again in that Iceland trip near the beginning where he has this little Also is above. Iceland Iceland feels really back. Maybe that's just because we Our had friends, friends went, there. went to Iceland and but I've seen like I feel like some shows that have been shooting in Iceland and then I mean this book is also from twenty sixteen. So. <laughs> well, but we picked it up. I mean right why is that? Because Iceland's back. Darby's Law. <laughs> <laughs> um, he has a line he goes this is a photo of like a beach and Iceland is very this kind of photography because of the landscape I think it just lends itself to what I call graphic designer photography um, it's extremely like barren and like because I think what well, the thing about graphic designer photography is it doesn't really want to tell too much of a story it just wants to have like a person kind of looking away or kind of looking at the camera but like kind of far away it's like very rarely are you being like actually like someone doing something fun or interesting close up it's always just like let's just have it be a little bit more quiet but he has this line where he goes so beautiful such a cool place to take pictures which I think is a really kind of interesting frame for a photography book to talk about a place as being a place to take pictures. To take like, there's photos. This... Like, and I don't think a lot of people, that's very like, because this was just at the beginning of Instagram where it's like, yeah, yeah you go to a place to take pictures, to take not a photo. to go it's like, to the place. It's this solipsism where it's like, you want to see yourself. We only want to see ourselves seeing ourselves. 
It's like when there's a beautiful sunset in Manhattan and the road is immediately clogged with everyone raising their phones to the sky like they're So then we can all go home and look at that photo on Instagram that you, this girl, you went to UCB with. Right. Like, <laughs> to be like, a oh my God. And you're just, and you're seeing Sarah from UCB, like, sketch 201, like, <laughs> <laughs> with her sunset in Windsor Terrace. And you're like, wow, slightly different it, angle. <laughs> from her Windsor Terrace part. <laughs> it also, I always try to, like, get out of this clothes disease that I feel like I have. I mean, I think everyone does this where. Clo- clothes a, a, a clothing disease of a me- it's right. a fantasy you know of the fantasy where when you really want a piece of clothing or you imagine all the things you think about how it's going to look in the instagram you're going to be not on the instagram just be do- i personally for not me the instagram like just more doing it like you myself laughing at an outdoor bar walking down the street at a party you chatting with oh. someone well this is part of our uh, post social media culture is we see uh, we are already our own avatars we are sort of playing a video game of ourselves and so we see ourselves walking around in the third person almost and we're always kind of having this simming ourselves this, we're simming ourselves we're seeing this bird's eye view i mean i when i'm trying that in an outfit uh, uh, on honestly of uh, um often that's often. the word i'm looking for <laughs> often i will i'll try out some dialogue in the mirror just to see how it to see how it feels oh wow <laughs> I mean, I'm not I'll, surprised you talk to yourself 24-7. <laughs> but I'll be, you know, I'll try the cardigan, just be like, oh, wait, seriously? <laughs> you know, just like, <laughs> does, it fit, does it feel natural? <laughs> does the cardigan fit in conversation? Oh, is it a tap or do I put in my card? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll have oh, a ice cream. Do you have any tonto. specials tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would love to hear your specials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Martini um, pornographic. We- <laughs> <laughs> we actually haven't dined her before <laughs> a, a photo just opened up here and it's his oh my god spirit is present you opened the photo book I opened to a the photo, photo. <laughs> it's his brother Romeo and I was like when I looked at that photo I was like this is like it's very fashion but it's like his brother like looking so British but like to even beyond like he's twinky but also like buff and scary at the same time and he's like 11 and has this really thin gold chain and it just this whole book is so dreamers because then yeah so after that to kind of go back into how he's in love with his mom his this is like where it gets really instagram filter the photo of victoria beckham and they're on their way to a charity a quote-unquote oh this is the one trip says, in kenya together it's so harry and megan because yes. they're always in africa and they're always being inspired by elephants <laughs> but yet they say this is so crazy he's at brooklyn beckham with the really dark photos of elephants he takes he says elephants so hard to photograph now i would actually argue and i've never taken a photograph (laughs) of an elephant that elephants are actually of the easier animals to photograph on a (laughs) safari they're 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 huge they move pretty (laughs) Pretty slowly they're kind of docile they just kind of stand there it's also it's just like it's such an obvious subject it's not like oh where is it in the shot it's like it's not some bird in the dis- it's just like it's literally an elephant like, it's- like girl they're walking pretty slow like a cheetah yeah you need like such an insane like high speed <laughs> lens for that so, but- <laughs> so hard to photograph that's just kind of an insane thing to say but you know challenges come in many shapes and forms and like for him if that was a challenge, then, like, I don't want to take that experience away, per se. But, yeah, the photo in the car, it's very it's very close up. It's very blurry. And then there's that other... And that's when he says she's so beautiful. There's that photo where he's wearing the sunglasses that are Victoria Beckham brand. Oh, and he calls them... And he's just like, uh, so, like, well, no. He's like, I love my VB sunglasses. He goes, rocking my VB. Rocking. So proud of my mum. And it's just like, he's so proud of her for making these insanely normal like slightly circular sunglasses this is where he is uh so for those of you who can't see which is everyone if you're not reading this, along with us so this photo is it's kind of at a crazy angle it's like he's turned himself and the camera so that this door behind him is at like a fully 45 degree angle but then he's straight on where he's wearing a backwards cap hands very close to frame you can see this jewelry and then of course the leica photo his face is in focus the camera the like a uh, camera is not and he's looking kind of justin bieber he's looking kind of Kristen stewart uh which is another theme in this book which is the re- intense kind of like 
very leaning Chris- butch lesbian vibes. Yes, well, to the his, whole it's like photography mall. Oeuvre. It's where he, it's his whole outfits are like skinny joggers, huge hoodie, asymmetrical hair. Yeah, which is uh, which is also what is so. And then like big Adidas flap rim. Lesbian about it. I'm just like uh, you are about to like ruin a fam's life in Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ruin my life, please. <laughs> Celebrity Book Club. And then speaking of genderqueer, the first color photo in this book is this really awesome folk. Oh, to, yeah. To, it's that, This guy with like long hair and like a really deep V and like kind of wearing makeup and like an earring. It's a very like, I went to every single state in the country and photographed queer youth from 18 oh. to 24. Yeah, it's very like the only queer photo project that's ever that happened. Ever happening what if is I like, took portraits hey, I'm looking of queer for people in their bedroom. And I'm going to photograph you <laughs> looking slightly sad. Hopefully but also an ID s- magazine is going to be like the photographer breaking boundaries. And it's just like this guy kind of looking off to the side with his long hair and his like filled in eyebrows. And, and, and Brooklyn goes, we had to jump over a hedge into a stranger's garden to take this picture. <laughs> Living on the edge. <laughs> it's like, he's also such a fucking mild ass, like, fake. Okay, I feel like he's being fake because that part, you remember the part where there's someone smoking a cigarette and he goes, oh, smoking, smoking is bad, so for you, bad for you. But I love the way it lights the face. <laughs> it is, oh, it looks so cool, but I know it's horrible for you. Well, aren't, like... I feel like that also is he's so like close with his parents and they're like it's bad for your skin and just like the youth right. is a and little I more guess like from a smoking? wellness perspective. Are you yeah. Kidding me? Like that's but then so and then he sees you. the other guy when he sees that guy drinking on the street in New York City and he's like this guy was drinking rose. It's so, so weird. Ran- no, he goes so random. <laughs> oh yeah, so <laughs> I was so like, random. Why are you mate? us? Like he says random <laughs> so much and the guy. It's not, it gets, and it's like, and aren't we'll, you from England where people are fucking drinking, drinking pints all the on the time, street mate. all the time, mate? And the funniest part about that calling it random is like, it was just like the most kind of like middle age, East Village, like gay guy, silver hair, like having yeah. a glass of rose in his stoop. It wasn't like being, he wasn't being like, oh, these guys were drinking 40s. Like, it was random. He's like, it was so random. I saw one man drink wine. <laughs> I had to photograph it. <laughs> well, this is this thing of European people being, like, so impressed and amazed by New York City grit. It's like every time my French friends come here and I they're like, about oh, my say. God, the Bushwick is so gorgeous. Uh. And it's just like, it's actually disgusting, but that's, I love that you love that. No, when your dear French friends, we were in the car driving, that we were literally at the gorgeous corner um, of Bushwick Avenue, Myrtle Avenue. And she was like, ah, can you slow down? It is so beautiful over here. Like, it is so gorgeous. It's like truly. It's one of those disgusting <laughs> intersections. In New York City. She's like, oh my God. But like, for. A like white rich street photographer, Myrtle Broadway, like is the dream because it's just like there are people like doing drugs and there's doing like, drugs and there's furniture on the street and there's trash, trash and, there's decay. and bodegas. And I mean, cigarettes. ultimately, he is very like the classic photography trope of just like decay. And it's like he's like, and like the most inspiring trip he takes is to, of course, say it with me, Coney Island. Coney Island. Well, okay, but I was going to say this. I wouldn't say this whole book. It's like he only no, really discovers the, the idea the of photography yeah. of decay and homeless people at the end. Yeah. And that's when his photography starts to get way more Airbnb. And it's like he goes to Paris. He takes a picture of that fence with locks on it, it's like, yes. which is like the most cheesy. Like, I feel like you could see that framed in like any Airbnb now, like anywhere in the world is like a fence with locks on it. And then, like, it's, like, two guys who are kind of, like, drunk outside of a locked bodega, like, in a shirt that says, like, I'm not an alcoholic, I'm a drunk. Another guy that, like, does look, like, slightly possibly homeless that he's, like, this guy looks so happy. How amazing that is. Like, he truly goes, like, I would say most of the book is, like, here is my hot parents were on vacation. Then he's, like, wait a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I just got a photo assignment that says, go somewhere you've never been. Yeah. 
and photograph it. Like it's very like got NYU, you I'm gonna take he's like, I'm just gonna ride the metro all the way to the last stop. So I got off and it was Coney Island. All which the way to Coney amazing Coppers. beach. Yeah, ultimately I prefer the photography that's like, here's my hot mom, mom. <laughs> who I'm obviously horny for. <laughs> I no, I prefer I... <laughs> hot because it's honest. This is my hot mom. It's well honest, mate. I think one thing I do really like about this book is I think in his absolute um just let's just say it kind of his his simple his simple brain, his straightforward yeah. simple brain, he kind of like blows the doors off of like what a lot of good photography is with just like Yes, because it's like there's the, there's the scene where okay when he gets that um the photo of the guy on the on Guy Ritchie's film set here so it's this so it's classic photo so this photo do you see this photo Lily so it's like this oh guy, that photo yeah it's that very, really like, could be a National Geographic absolutely or like New York Times Magazine it's very yeah. close to portraiture we've got this guy with scraggly hair and like you know wearing a sweater and like lines on his face kind of furrowing his brow making like a you can't tell if he's happy or sad face and this he goes. I took this on the set of Guy Ritchie's movie, King Arthur. I got talking to this man. He was so interesting. He builds film sets and he's got an amazing face. So I asked if I could photograph him and he agreed. I love this image. You can't tell what he's thinking, but you know he has a great story. I'm and obsessed it's like, with you can't tell what he's thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like well yeah i'm not talking to him so <laughs> yeah it's like, that's kind of what a photograph is and it's literally it's like he's basically just being like so he's old he, ha- he has but he wrinkles. has long hair and he's and wrinkled like, and it's like this is literally what everyone thinks good portraiture is it's just like what if it's a photo of an old guy and you like put flash on them so you can really see their wrinkles <laughs> i like, honestly will say i also again not back to romeo but i'm just like this there's no, another photo, photo so- of his brother holding flowers looking sad and isn't this so like that is fully like queer photography that I'm actually seeing like at a show at a gallery that people And also this is couldn't it be like Jadar, Muslim queer youth yes. taken into Jakistan? Yes. Like <laughs> 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 These are flowers for his boyfriend. They can only meet indoors. <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying could not be more accurate. <laughs> I wanted to go back though to kind of an update on Brooklyn and Victoria's relationship because now this is giving me this book that was came out are you about to bring in like like... outside gossip (laughs) into our into our reading Uh, uh, of this primary text Lily (laughs) is this allowed (laughs) (laughs) no this is kind of building on what's happening right now with Brooklyn Beckham and Victoria Beckham's relationship and referencing the book if I may um, Please. if you'll allow Ref- that, sir. Referencina. So I don't know if anyone followed the Brooklyn Beckham drama where he just got married to a woman who is in like, she's in, oh, she's in that show, The Bates Motel, like on A&E or something. She's an actress. She's an actress. And Victoria Beckham wanted her to wear a quote unquote VB dress for her wedding. And Naturally. she refused. Wow. Go off. Yeah, so, and VB is pretty pissed. Also, I think Brooklyn Brooklyn, and his new wife are, like, not going home for the holidays to the David and Victoria's house. So Victoria hates this bitch. And it's like, now it makes so much sense because, like, Because Brooklyn they had Vic- such an Oedipal relationship. So, of course, she's going to be so competitive with the daughter. Right, and be like... Yeah. It's basically it is the like idea when someone is, gets married and they're like, oh, I'm losing my son, yeah, because they're, they're like we broke up. So I feel like obviously that is why Victoria is so pissed, and no wonder this Bates Motel actress like is like, no, I have to like. She make has to a assert stand. herself. She's yeah, it's like she's not going to be like, oh no, it's fine. I'll just wear the mother's dress and I'll actually like um wear the mother's like makeup line and I'll cut my hair to look like the mother and I'll just change my name to Victoria. I think that'll just be easier for everyone. It's like <laughs> yeah. No, it's just like it's just, I, I'm not going to be you, you fucking psycho. Like I'm going to fuck your son and he's going to call me Bates Motel girl or whatever <laughs> my name is. It's not going to be like, "Ooh, posh, give it to me." And we're going to make like gin and tonics at home because okay, now so I, also, I, I, <laughs> but, 
Brooklyn Beckham, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what he's doing with his Leica right now, but like he's fully shifted to be a food influencer where like, yeah, I mean, the interest of just, like, taking photos of being on vacation and then, like, having cocktails is not, like, it's not a long walk. So no, it's, like, no, I, it's not. <laughs> but now he's being, like, fully Instagram chef, like, being, like, I'm going to teach, like, my friend who's the SoundCloud rapper, like, how to make the perfect steak. Yeah. Um, I think that's a great direction for him. I will say, so I watched that video you sent me, again, outside research, like bringing, <laughs> yeah. bringing secondary sources to the primary text. I did notice that he looks, it was a very post-pandemic, like, oh, y'all been inside, y'all been not missing meals <laughs> at home with <laughs> with Bates Motel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, I mean, he's, he said in like the steak video I watched that he eats a steak every night. Okay, that is not healthy. <laughs> I, yeah, calling it out, it's not healthy. So, and yeah, like I feel like he's making pressure. this huge steak with butter, and then like they're having like four gin and tonics, which he referred to as a experiment. They, him and his wife have like quote unquote an experimental cocktail club. When he did this book, I think he went to Parsons, and he dropped out after one year because he got homesick. Oh, I mean, defining, like, rich British girl, just like, I'm going to Parsons to study photography, and I'm going to take photos of my rich family, and then also going to Africa, which was extremely inspiring for me. And it's like, they never go beyond that. It's just like, it's very just like, I saw poor people, and I was like, that was inspiring. And then he <laughs> is wearing some shirt. Because they're says, living like, in, like, a I hut, but they're smiling. Fight stigma against AIDS. And you're like, oh, wait, yeah, there's, like, a shot of, pa- like, Posh wearing, like, an AIDS t-shirt, like, touching an elephant and just being like, <laughs> nothing's more inspiring. It's so hard to photograph elephants. <laughs> <laughs> I guess also this is um, time to come out as uh, someone not getting into Parsons' experience. Wait, I absolutely Oh, no, forgot. actually, I didn't even end up applying because I visited with a Parsons, like, person that came to my school and, like, looked at my portfolio and she was like so Parsons and mean and was just like, don't even apply here. Okay. Yeah. She, <laughs> <laughs> she was like, no. <laughs> um because huh. again, my portfolio was a little more outsider art and Yeah. Yeah. And it was were- like so Matisse like circa third grade, and it was just being so crazy and scribbles, and she was like Listen, like, this is kind of more of a technical school for learning technical skills. and I mean, that was thinking, like, I did the stuff that I had to do to, like... I mean, you, you would not do, have like... lasted three days at Parsons. Um, and I think... No, really absolutely not. No, I was, like, applied, because it's, like, remember, I did this, like, performance where I, like, wore my mother's clothes and took photos of it, Brooklyn Beckham stuff, and then it was, like... <laughs> yeah. But then I did have, like, your classic, like, charcoal self-portraits that you need to apply for art school but yeah she was like this is a no um and you wanted to go for fashion design yeah i mean that's insane as we know friend of the body arabella went to parsons fashion design it's like the most psychotic program ever where it's just like you're working 30 hour days yeah like cutting and pattern making no thank god i didn't go to parsons So I yeah, relate. Like, Brooklyn, girls are like Brooklyn. girls are like sobbing and getting on the plane back to Korea like every <laughs> single week at that school. Celebrity book club. Segments, mate. Segments, mate. She, what does, where she, does wear? she live? What does she wear? How she how she eat, mate? How she how she live? What's on her plate, mate? What's, what's, what's she on her plate? And down. Okay. I mean, doing... full English, right? She had full English breakfast, like beans, sausage, yeah, like full toast. bean sausage, like sourdough. So, what she eat, mate? She's like straight up foodie, mate. But like Instagram foodie, like yeah, she's, she's eating so, it all, mate. She's doing. Um, she's doing like that baked pasta. They always say pasta. Pasta, over there. yeah, and and parmesan and pasta. Like, I think like Brooklyn is so carbone. Like he's at home making. And he got the yeah. recipe like from the owner of he's Carbone so of the Gold their, like, Belly. Spicy he's getting like the the vodka rigatoni, the David Chang like what, ricotta peppy like ramen roll like yeah. And then he's like, oh, to Victoria, my wife Nicole. Okay, I'm gonna make you like <laughs> David. I'm gonna make you the Momo Fuku Bosom just for the two of us. Yeah. And then they're like do- throwing out half of it. Like they're very like are they. And I do feel like, don't you think he's a little bit like their 
housekeeper is doing the prep and he's getting yes. to the kitchen and everything. The whole mise en place is laid out. Like, everything <laughs> yeah. is fully laid out. And like the, the, the bosom's already been cooking. And he's just like, I'm making bosom. So they're like, you're so crazy and ambitious, Brooklyn. <laughs> and then it's just him like assembling. <laughs> and there's like a little thing of chili flakes, a little thing of like yeah. rosemary sea salt. Yeah. And he's like, so first you want to like salt you. This is a New York strip. First you want to right. salt it really well. And they're like, oh my God, you're cra- You're so tempted to detail, Brooklyn. It's amazing. I love you pursuing your passion for cooking. <laughs> um, and then he's like making a little gem salad. But again, like everything is kind of arranged. Yeah, it's, um, all, pre- it's, all, it's all pre-arranged, mate. It's all mise en place. We got all yeah. ready to go. He's I think he's absolutely like digging deep into nothing fancy, being like, babe, what, Ro- <laughs> what Rama recipe you want made tonight? <laughs> Mate, I doubt it. I don't think he's got... I think he's got Otto Lange on the shelf. I don't think he's got Roman on the shelf. I think he... I mean, you don't think it's both? Like He's got... Uh, no. He's got Jerusalem on the shelf, of course. Absolutely Jerusalem. Absolutely the Momofuku book. I think, like, Silver Palette. Like, he has, like, some big, like, classics. The Silver Palette, I think, is, like, the big Italian one. Because I think um, he's also, like, chefs, like, major chefs, like Jamie Oliver. Like, he has, like, the signed copy that is for David, but, like... He's not being so like cookbook cookbooks. It's more like chef's books. Chef's book versus oh, you mean like a little more like chef forward, like 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 restaurant tour is I, I, like more that kind of chef as opposed to like the Alice and Romans and the Ida Gardens and like people who are more like oh recipe like I'm a foodie yeah, it's I'm more a recipe like forward I'm a foodie. Or- but yeah, rather than like oh I'm more of like a celebrity chef and this is my cookbook. Um. And as we know, he right, he makes gin and tonics, um, and is like, I'm experimenting with cocktails. Yeah, so this amazing video where he's looking very well nourished, he makes this quote experimental gin and tonic that's gin. Monkey forty seven, first of all, my kind he's of a, guy. He's a monkey girl. He's a monkey girl. Uh gin. Oh, that is the gin tonic, and then it's just like rosemary, mint, and cucumber. And like that's actually beautiful. That it looks delicious, but like and he because he goes, I'm a nutter. I'm a total nutter in the kitchen. As if it's insane that he's just putting like these herbs in this drink. Wait, can I actually call something for twenty twenty three? I'm listening. Gin and tonics are back. Agreed. Out with the martini. More gin and tonics. Okay, when this episode airs, hopefully my earth shattering piece on the martini will have come out. Oh, um, we'll link to of, it. We'll link to it. We'll link to it in the show page, and hopefully, uh, yeah, it'll be kind of like the end of an era and the start of something new. But I think like gin is going to carry over because people still like the floralness of it. Yes. and like this, the the you know the complexity of it. Um, but yeah, I see gin and tonics making a big comeback. And, you know, but like, you know, with a gorgeous tonic, a a stick of rosemary, stunning, stunning things happening in there. So I think he's doing that. Stunning. Stunning. Um, He also, I guess, I feel like I saw this TikTok breakfast sandwich and I feel like he's making it where you make this like egg custard and it's like this perfect square and you're getting like, it's just everything. I feel he's like, oh, I went to this bakery and I got this like special Japanese butter roll. Mm. But again, it's the housekeeper like making the custard and he's like yes. beating the eggs maybe. And then she's doing the rest. Yeah. <laughs> she's <laughs> really doing a lot of her. I just like I'm reminded of my uh, this rich British friend that I had. You may know. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. And one time I was at her house in the south of France and like we were being like such like wasted naughty like rich girls like partying all night and like smoking in their like 14th century villa and then and it's like i'm sure like the whole house was like such a mess (laughs) and then like i get up and you come into the kitchen it's like completely clean there's like a massive spread of croissant from like the local bakery and just like every kind of breakfast you go out and like pitcher of orange juice like already like decanted (laughs) movie decanted (laughs) orange juice (laughs) and it's so just like okay and like the housekeeper who has actually lived at this villa since the 1300s just like came (laughs) and cleaned up after the kids and fully like made a breakfast spread and then you're touching one croissant She's like throwing all the rest of them away. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly what's happening at his house every day. <laughs> um, okay, what does he wear? Does he okay, wear? did you He's notice? He's moved out of his like huge hoodie, like Bieber joggers. 
Did you notice that he's wearing a tiny cross in one of? I'm yes, like, I did. Is I was he like, actually Christian. I mean, or is that's that just so like Victoria celeb. Beckham, and yes, yeah, I mean Justin is very Christian. He's extremely Christian, and I don't know. Brooklyn must hang out with Justin. Maybe they seem so similar to me. Brooklyn now, I think, is like a little more just like supreme ninety dollar, sorry, four hundred dollar, like heavyweight white t shirt. Mm-hmm. It's like a little more. He's a little more Carhartt whip now. Yeah, you think he's that streetwear? I actually think he's he's actually reverting to being less streetwear and like coming away from being a skater now that he's more like I'm married and at home. And I think he's just wearing like random expensive British brands you haven't heard heard of that are Pull called like Pull and Bear and like <laughs> Cask and Talon. And he's just wearing this Cask and Talon like button down and like great great like home corduroys <laughs> really good home quarters which i also that's a 20 that's one of my um 2023 20, goals for the winter Ho- home corduroys no actually out of the home corduroys you know what had really good corduroys was when i was at the levi's outlet store at the outlet mall in lee really massachusetts and it was like oh no sorry no uh wait was it levi's or j crew chase those those corduroys we saw were that that we liked was that J Crew or Levi's when we were at the outlet mall because I saw a pair of J Crew like painter corduroy it was pants. J it was J Crew it was J Crew oh I wonder if it was the ones I almost bought on Black Friday and then I said like Lily don't buy anything I'll yeah, thank you I, there was some stuff there at J Crew that was very like you know what this is kind of nice. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm not kinda gonna nice. ultimately buy. Kind of nice, J Crew. Kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll loop back to. Um, I'll update you guys if I get a pair of good outside of the home <laughs> corduroys. Okay, and then finally, what's the other? Oh, how does he live, mate? How does he live? I mean, I think you, the kitchen island. I mean, I've seen it like, on his videos, so I guess it's cheating. Like it's just it goes on forever. Is it's it just, marble? Like, the longest island. Or is it quartz? But that's all I've seen. I think he's big. Velvet Dolly, couch? is it marble or is it quartz? Oh, so I think it's marble. It does seem a little bit more like old fashioned in that way. That he's I also think a, he is a little big more slab British of Italian with his um, refrigeration. I think it's like underneath. Like maybe he does have a big sub zero, but he also has drawers, fridge drawers. Absolutely, there's fridge drawers full of beverages, which is just like the chicest thing in the world. One day. Uh, um yeah i think there's like a frame photo that like someone got for him like of himself like on a skateboard maybe i guess Um, the question is like is he so rich hobby girl like does he have any of his photography framed or is he like weirdly embarrassed of it no i that's what i'm saying i think like he has a couple of the frames and it was like it was like a gift from his dad being like brooklyn i I framed i believe in you your photo of me taking a photo of you, I framed it. Like, and it's your Christmas present. And he's like, Dad, it's smashing, wow, mate. Wow, thank you so mate, much. Mate, this is aces. This is tops. It's heaps tops. <laughs> heaps tops. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and there's just, like, a photo, like, of his dad taking a photo of him with a, like, of, like in a mirror in the bathroom. And I think he has, like, in one of his rooms also, like, tons of copies of this. Here's the thing about him being high bed versus low bed. I'm actually I think having he's a tough low. time. I want to say he's low because like he is like kind of sexy, but then I'm also like it's very English to have like such a tufted ass high bed, and I could see him jacking it up there. I don't know. I feel but like ultimately, him and, you're, him you know, and Bates are j- are like no, getting into it's the low, lowest. It's low, and they spent a lot of time in Los Angeles, like growing up. So yes. yeah, I think it's low, and um, tons of time in Napa too. Oh yeah. He loves Napa. I think just to add to the, I do think he's like, oh, babe, like I'm going to open up the 98 Barolo. Well, I guess he's so, I feel like he is natty a little bit. And she's like, did we like that one? <laughs> she's like re- really like not posh in my mind. <laughs> Bates Motel, she's like, she's British and she's like, no, I think she's like American. South work. Oh, get out of town. She's Which is probably Markle. why the drama. I think she's some fucking basic American. It's just like every British dynasty, there has to be like the wayward child who goes and marries an American and fucks yeah. the whole thing up. I will also say that I give this book um hmm. 
hard to say. It takes it's like, you on a journey for sure. Um, and it's like I almost flipping want to through give it... quickly. I don't. I'm like not tempted to really spend that much more time with it. I will say. Yeah, I'm gonna give it. Okay, look, the photo of Victoria Beckham salmon fishing in a, an amazing outfit. Like the grailery in her salmon fishing outfit is pretty epic, and she's just wearing these sunglasses, and you know, it's like. It's no, just, it's she looks... cool. It's kind of like Arcteryx. Like it's like this, but it's like I kind of why and she's wearing fingerless gloves, and then she's got these kind of thick wading pants. It's a dope ass. Fit, I'll say this: sure. that photo I would pay a hundred thousand dollars for, to have but it framed, I gave like huge this in your living book yeah. one point five charity trips to Kenya out of five. Yeah, I I have to sort of like agree. I think I'm going to give this book two out of five very difficult to photograph elephants because <laughs> ultimately I appreciate that he is letting us in on his um, family trips, life, his and family trip, vulnerable, and the and vulnerability like, that he said that it is hard to photograph elephants. But and I like that there's a that there was an attempt at a concept here with like you know the the color. It's like mostly black and white with just like some you know a little bit of like a a gel over some of them, like the blue or the pink, but, and then the space scene, you know, there was some effort made here. It doesn't feel like a total cash grab. It really does. And it's with Rizzoli, which is like an art book, you know? So he really did go after what he wanted at the time. Like this to me almost feels like a little more original than him being just this like random TikTok like food guy. I agree. So... A lot of celebrity kids out there, they could grab a camera, but are they going to go ahead and make this book? and The Rizzoli book? No, they're not. They're not. So good job, Brooklyn. Good job, Brooklyn. I'm so proud of you. You're one of my favorite sons. Um, let's <laughs> yeah. all go have sex as a family in our huge <laughs> yeah. bed. Please invite me to Napa for your family orgy. But yeah, ultimately, best. Best. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrity Book Club is presented by Prologue Project, in it. The show is produced by Benjamin Frisch, a smashing mate with editorial support from Leon Nafak, the wanker, Andrew Parsons, another wanker, and Madeline Kaplan, a smashing bird. Our production manager is Pasia Valin, the queen of all birds. Original theme song by Stephen Phillips Horse, a nasty little wanker, a poofter too. Artwork by Teddy Blanks at Chips NY. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CBC The Pod. Subscribe on your favorite app. So it's probably Spotify, whatever you got here in the States. Leave us a review on Apple. Put your heart into it. Don't forget to tell all your friends about us. And just go to patreon.com if you want to hear more of us slapping each other's backs and down in points at your old pub and getting each other's knickers all in the twisty uh, over there at patreon.com. So CBC The Pod. Cheers, mate.